Hi, I'm Cynthia Shiller. Please like and subscribe. So we're going to talk about schizophrenia. I'm going to do a series on different types of mental illnesses. There are over 200 different types uh, to kind of help us narrow down what exactly is going on uh, with our person, possibly ourselves. So schizophrenia, there's five different types and 23 me million people worldwide have it. It's more common among men. Men also get it earlier than women so among the males there's 12 million as opposed to 9 million with the females so um what exactly is schizophrenia um how does it happen so um it's characterized by hallucinations uh thoughts that are not organized hall hallucinations delusions uh the way that they act, also their speech. I had a neighbor that was schizophrenic. Um, also at my university, there was um, a lot of homeless people. And um, it was kind of uh, interesting to see as you're walking through the courtyard, um, people are shouting out, talking to nobody that's there. Because um, we had some schizophrenics that came onto the campus. So the causes, they're not completely understood, but they do believe that there is a genetic component, also possibly environmental factors that happen. So these symptoms can vary depending on the individual, but they usually do see those thought disturbances, delusions, also the hallucinations that go on. And it's diagnosed um not so much by a test, by, but by a characteristic clinical picture. So they don't have an actual diagnostic test for schizophrenia. So these study, doctors will study the genetic and also the developmental background of the patient and also the changes in their mental state before the onset of the illness. Because it it's like um, you go through life and then all of a sudden... Um, some little stressor pushes you over the edge and you can't get back. You're stuck in this uh, schizophrenic mode. Um, so uh, it can be treated. Uh, my neighbor was on lithium, um, but it will be diagnosed by a medical professional who can uh, prescribe medications. There's often some lab testing. They might use imaging. And like I said, it starts earlier in men, but it can be anywhere from 18 to 35. Women are a little bit later in, in that age group. Um, so it is known that family history can increase the likelihood of developing schizophrenia. And sometimes it might need uh, urgent medication or medical attention. So it can happen because of um, uh, a, a, a desire to commit suicide sometimes. So, uh, it needs some intervention. So paranoid schizophrenia, that's probably one you guys have heard of. Those are the ones that have auditory hallucinations where they're hearing things. They have delusions. Um, often they have a paranoia that they're being watched. Somebody's spying on them or plotting against them. And we also have disorganized schizophrenia. Now this one is also characterized by auditory or visual hallucinations. So it's not just hearing things, it's also seeing things. And these hallucinations can be in any type of uh, sensory form. Uh, hearing voices is the most common that these people experience. But there's also catatonic schizophrenia. And it's um, has a characteristic of strange motor activity. So they might exhibit an inability to move. Uh, they might have, have strange postures, um, extreme excessive movements that are purposeful. And the undifferentiated schizophrenia, those are where we have patients who have schizophrenic symptoms, such as the hallucinations, the delusions, but they don't really have the full criteria for the other types. So that falls into the category of undifferentiated they're not quite sure the residual schizophrenic did i say five or six two okay so the residual schizophrenia um these patients are already diagnosed they might not suffer from the common characteristic type of symptoms but they have eccentric behavior their speech 
is disorganized, doesn't quite make sense. And they also lack motivation and a, they lack emotions. So they have a, um, a, a less ability to display their emotions. So um, there are other types um, where they break out in silly laughter and their mood changes. They have those disorganized thoughts. They're hard to understand because of the speech that they're using. Um, uh, their behavior is different. You can tell something's going on with them. And uh, when you have simple schizophrenia, it has more negative symptoms. So the common symptoms um, are agitation, delusion, uh, flat affect, which is a lack of emotional expression. A lot of them develop phobias. Phobias are when you're scared of something. Uh, it can be of spiders. It can be of um, air. It could be of anything. And they'll often have inappropriate reactions. And a lot of times it's in a reaction to what they're going through. And it makes them agitated. They don't really um, have an interest uh, or feel pleasure from doing activities. They just kind of are off doing their own thing. They really don't want to do anything. And they have um, a, de a de decreased speech output, <laughs> which I think I'm doing right now. So what causes this? Um, uh, like I said, you know, we're still doing so much research on all these different mental illnesses, but there are a lot of factors. Um, they think that those neurotransmitters in our brain that relay information, um, so dopamine can cause schizophrenia. Uh, it, it tends to run in family. So heredity plays a point. Uh, so if the parent has this disorder, um, their children are more sus susceptible. And also there's um, a shrinkage that happens inside the brain, or there can be a circuitry dysfunction where the brain's not communicating the right way. And there are complications sometimes during pregnancy and birth, and it can um, possibly lead to schizophrenia. Um, if uh, there's an infection, possibly malnutrition, complications during birth, such as uh, some brain injuries, um, a, a lot of, uh, oh, what was I going to say? Uh, a lot of the, the mental illnesses are, are caused by like damaged areas of the brain where it's just not communicating right. Um, so the diagnosis so they like to do a blood test just to make sure that people aren't using illicit street drugs because those can sometimes cause similar symptoms. And like I said, they use that big care, uh, clinical picture to pull together the characteristics. Um, and uh, they also could do a blood test, urine test, a CT scan, just to get confirmation that it's not street drugs that are causing the person to act the way that they are. And they also want to rule out other neurological disorders by a CT scan. It's amazing what we can see, uh, the similarities between the different mental illnesses, the different areas of the brain that are affected, the size of the brain, um, whether it's the different portions or the gray matter, the white matter. Um, so treatment. You can use psychotherapy. There are also medications that are available. A lot of times with schizophrenics, so is they don't like taking their medication sometimes um, because they start feeling like they're okay. They're okay. And they're okay because they're on the medication. But once they stop it, um, they just go back into uh, the same thing. My neighbor didn't want to continue taking it because she gained quite a bit of weight. Um, she was real uh, thin girl and then she got real puffy bloated. Uh, so it wasn't just that she gained weight. She had like a real puffy look to her. Um, can't remember exactly how much. she gained quite a bit though. So um, it, it was depressed. And then that's the thing too, on top of it, she was getting depressed because of her weight. So, um, you know, we can have comorbidity, things like that uh, happen. So schizophrenia, um, is not the most common mental illness, but you know, uh, more than 3 million cases per year. 
So it's something to think about the prognosis. Um, fewer than 20% of the patients with the first episode of schizophrenia have a good prognosis. So that means that fewer than 20 out of every 100 people who have schizophrenia are, are they're most likely not going to marry, have children, or even hold a job. So it's the behaviors um, that are, are necessary to have a normal, healthy, uh, productive life that they just don't have the coping skills, the uh, mental ability. And there are three phases um, uh, of schizophrenia and the positive symptoms. Um, like I said, they'll, they'll go through and, and see if there's that thought disorder. So what is the risk? What's the risk of developing it? Um, it's a gen, like a genetic factor such as abnormal dopamine levels. If the mother was malnourished, also, uh, infections during pregnancy, uh, sometimes too, um, uh, you know, stress can cause it, um, which is really sad with all this bullying that goes on, it can actually lead somebody to develop things like schizophrenia or, or narcissism. Um, a loss of a parent it can, it can be that trigger that pushes them over the edge. Uh, they might have some predisposition to it too. Uh, poverty, um, you know, not getting the right prenatal care, um, sometimes witnessing the domestic violence. So there's a lot, you know, uh, it's, it's just really, really confusing sometimes on whether we stay or go, or they talk about not uh, stigmatizing mental illness and, you know, we are all humans, you know, we can't, we, we have to give them some care, but to, to, uh, have it destroy our lives as well. It's, it's, we have to be cautious on how we handle things, who we marry, who we, um, want around our kids because it can damage the kids. Um, it can damage us. Uh, and, and we have to go about this with education because if somebody is drowning and you can save them there's always a risk because drowning people love to pull you down they they panic and and they climb up you uh and you're in water so a lot of times they drag you down there's certain techniques like the hair pull you put your fingers under and grab the uh at the base of the head and and do a hair pull while you're swimming with them to, to keep things safer but if the waves are too big or there's, you know, a shark right there or whatever, you have to assess the situation to see how safe it is. Uh, Cause two people dying, isn't going to make it better. So when we're dealing with the mental illness, we have to think about our lives um, because we have to protect ourselves and how, how close do we, um, bring these people into our lives. We have to assess how safe it is, what the risk factors are. Um, you know, there are medical professionals, uh, therapists out there to help these people. Um, there are some institutions that they're really struggling. Um, there are people who that's their job, who took on these roles. Um, so there are people available to help. Um, do we marry into that? Do we stay with, um, a psychopath or, you know, um, how do we protect ourselves? You know, we have to really look at the red flags and, you know, sometimes we feel guilty doing what's best for us. You know, uh, a lot of us want to help the world and we can do it, but we don't, necessarily have to bring them into our lives. So I know, um, with my neighbor, uh, you could see her, her whole face just changed. She heard things through the TV, uh, and, um, it was scary. 
It was really scary. Uh, she lost her child, uh, not death, but her, her daughter was taken away and she was allowed visitation. But um, it, it's a scary transformation to see them changing. Um, and it's unstable and scary for us too. It can be traumatic for us. And a lot of mental illness is caused by trauma. So not all mental illness is permanent, but it still affects lives. And it has that uh, butterfly effect where it can affect our children. And then it's going to affect our grandkids because of what happened to our children. And uh, just America, uh, America has the highest rate of mental illness. Um, you know, uh, we're doing something wrong. We're doing something wrong. Um, and I'm going to do a series on all the different kinds of mental illness, just to be, for us to be aware, because we're going to go through some things in life. Um, you know, just like we did with, uh, am I the narcissist or was it reactive abuse? Did I do the right thing? Um, so we can be self-aware of whatever we're going through. We could be mentally healthy. Um, but we did go through some trauma and, you know, some of us have depression, um, and we got to figure out how to get out of this. And, and there's different tech, there's different treatments for the different mental illnesses. So I feel that I should do a series on the types of mental illness. Uh, so we can be aware of the people that we're dealing with. Um, a psychopath that would be, that's th those are those people that can murder or, you know, at the drop of a hat where you think you're safe, you, you hear all these stories of, you know, this happy couple and, and like the, the sick, uh, painful murders that are put upon these people or the abuse that they go through. And you see the reaction of somebody, uh, you know, um, the schizophrenics that I saw, they, they were in a whole different world. I went to the beach um, and I, I'm not a uh, clinician, but um, I was at the beach and I could almost guarantee you this guy was schizophrenic because he's uh, out in the middle of the water and he's just talking, like staring off into space, just talking. Uh, he's even correcting uh, who he's talking to, uh, re-clarifying things. Um, it was like a, a conversation. I only heard the one side, but um, it was interesting. He was saying something about the mental illness. I could only get so close because I there's all the you know the sea seagulls. I don't know what kind of birds they were. Um, I don't remember what they look like, <laughs> but uh, there's birds flying around and. Um, you know, all the chitter chatter of the people at the beach, but he started saying about something about funding for the mentally ill. And, um, I think it was like governmental stuff he was talking about. So they can be somewhat educated, uh, sometimes probably very educated because he was talking about current events. He was talking about, uh, in the seventies, uh, I can't remember, but he was spot on with what he was saying, but, uh, he was talking about a prejudice uh, against people with mental disorders um, and how they were lucky because whatever bill was, something was going on. But um, I believe he was self-aware, but with schizophrenia, you get a diagnosis uh, and it seemed like he internalized the diagnosis, that he accepted that. A lot of narcissists won't accept a diagnosis. Um, you know, so, uh, my friend's brother, uh, struggled with schizophrenia and he ended up committing suicide at, I don't know exactly, but he was probably 30, 36 to 42, probably mm, 32 to 42. I'm not exactly sure, but, um, you know, uh, there is that 988 hotline in America with one as a country code. Uh, NAMI, N-A-M-I, um, is a free organization with their uh, counselors. Um, 
sponsors, uh, people to help talk. And it's a great group of people. So mental illness, it, we can do our step to protect ourselves, to not keep that chain, that snowball growing because it, it's sad, but it's like an infection, just like, um, it'll spread just like when we're depressed and we're moping or tired, like we're bringing other people down too. That's why if we can do our part to rebuild ourselves, um, to keep ourselves safe, to, to be who we truly are, um, we're doing our little part on conquering the, the snowball effect and not letting it continue spinning out of control. So I hope that was helpful and I hope uh, I'll see you soon and topic requests are always welcome. One-on-ones are available and have an awesome Labor Day weekend.